Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for free premium sports picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Now, I've just had the honor, and really, I mean, I mean the privilege of watching a great fight. Right, Leonard Bundu going to England and successfully defending his European Union title over Frankie Gavin. Now let me just say, I was watching this fight, it was great stuff. And keep in mind, I was on the other side of the play. I was rooting for Frankie Gavin. But Leonard Bundu looked so good. You know, he was the man in better shape. And more importantly, I just... Well, let's just put it this way. I know Frankie I know Frankie Gavin's upset. I know Frank Warren's upset. I haven't seen the replay of the fight. This is right after the fight. But I have no problem with the decision. Right? I thought Frankie Gavin was on his game early. I thought Frankie Gavin won many of the early rounds. But then he got hit with the kind of liver shot. In fact, Bundu calls the punch chopped liver, right? He got hit with the kind of liver punch that, quite frankly, could easily have ended the fight. In fact, there's a pause after he gets hit with it. Once the pain and realization seeps in, Gavin is on the canvas. Now, there's controversy. I believe the controversy is warranted. Gavin goes down. He barely beats the count. He spits out his mouthpiece, right? Diego Corrales style for OGs who follow the sport. He spits out his mouthpiece. The ref then takes time to walk Gavin, who clearly, in my opinion, could not have made it through the round without the mouthpiece ruse. The ref takes Gavin to his corner. Gavin gets valuable time to clear his head while they rinse off his mouthpiece and put it back in his mouth. Now, at the time of the knockdown, I had Gavin ahead by several rounds. But let's just say Gavin, after that, looked like he'd been shot. His legs were gone. Then he hit the wall against a better athlete, right? The fight has some great dynamics. Gavin is more talented. Gavin's the better boxer. Bundu has the better stamina. I know after the fight, Bundu talks about cramps in his legs. I would never have guessed he had leg cramps until he said so because in the fight he looks like the Energizer Bunny. Right? Bundu at 39 has incredible stamina so Gavin takes the early rounds then he gets hit and dropped by the way the early rounds are competitive but I gave Gavin most of the early rounds Bundu's in the fight but Gavin just has the spacing and angles and timing working too well but after Gavin gets dropped Gavin is not the same and Gavin looks like he's barely hanging on. At times, it looks to me like Gavin is drunk. Right? I know he's not drunk. What I'm saying is he's tired and he's hurt. Right? That liver shot takes away his legs. Let me also point out, too, that up against the ropes, it's a mismatch. When Bundu gets Gavin up against the ropes... He dominates. So you literally go from Gavin having the upper hand when the fight's in the middle of the ring to Gavin getting hit with a bomb, dropping about 10,000 feet from, you know, flight, and then looking bad round after round for, let's say, 10 seconds each round up against the ropes. Bundu stages a huge comeback in the fight. 
Then we get to the championship rounds, and they are championship rounds. Both guys, keep in mind, with unbeaten streaks on the line, go for broke in rounds 10 and 11. I thought Frankie Gavin had the upper hand in round 12. But understand, the scoring is razor close, right? The margin is the knockdown, right? Frankie Gavin really should have no complaints. He was fighting on his home turf. Bundu came. Bundu, as a lot of savvy veterans do, was able to survive the tough opening. Then he gets the one knockdown of the fight, and it's a knockdown on par with Gill's knockdown of Darren Barker. Right? Let me point out, too, when Barker gets off the canvas in that fight, he doesn't have the extra time that Frankie Gavin gets by spitting out, and it looks like he spits out his mouthpiece. Keep in mind, there's a delay. He gets hit, he turns to the side, then he falls. Those liver shots, just think De La Hoya against Bernard Hopkins. Those liver shots literally paralyze your legs for several seconds. Gavin is lucky he beat the count, He's even luckier that after beating the count, he then had an additional 15 seconds, it looks like, to be walked over to his corner and then to get the mouthpiece put back in his mouth. Given that he got knocked down, given that he looked bad to me in rounds 8, 9, you know, uh, he looked bad in the rounds right after the knockdown, given that he got dominated on the ropes, Right? Even though I was wrong on this fight, I cannot complain about the decision. Right? I consider this a champ going to a foreign land, right? Having the other guy start fast and then doing what he had to do to break down his opponent. Understand, Gavin is an angles guy who's best in the middle of the ring. Right? Bundu decides he's going to smother the angles. He's relentless. He has the faster hands. He's continually trying to cut off the ring on Frankie Gavin. Right? Gavin himself is using roughhouse tactics when he's pinned up against the ropes. Gavin literally is hooking Bundu and pushing Bundu out of the way. It's a bit of a wrestling match. That's the dynamic Bundu had to create to be competitive in the fight. Keep in mind, Gavin has things so well timed that Bundu's right hand, I know Bundu fights out of an orthodox stance, but his real punch is that right hand. That right hand is neutralized. So Bundu's able to end the fight on a body shot. I believe it's his left hand, and it's a beauty. He squeezes it into the one place where he can get it. That body shot ended the fight effectively, right? Frankie Gavin, had he continued at the same pace at which he started the fight, he probably wins this fight eight rounds to four. That body shot changes everything. I credit Frankie Randall, excuse me, Frankie Gavin, for surviving several rounds with dead legs after getting hit in the body. Right? His legs are dead. As I said, he looks drunk. He looks tired. Body language-wise, you can barely tell that 39-year-old Leonard Bundu is tired or winded. In fact, after the fight, Bundu gives a great interview. He doesn't look winded. Frankie Gavin is so devastated by the loss, Frankie feels he was ripped off. It was a close fight. Frankie immediately leaves the ring. But the point is, as Bundu gives the interview, he doesn't even look like he's breathing that heavily after a grueling 12 rounds. Let me applaud both men. I thought it was a spectacular fight. I'm going to lick my wounds. I did have Frankie Randall, excuse me, Frankie Gavin. Randall's the guy who gave Chavez his first loss a different generation. I did have Frankie Gavin in this fight. 
but I'm not complaining. I thought this was a great fight. Some casino someplace has a few of my dollars. Good for them. They earned it on this one. I congratulate Leonard Bundu on really a great performance. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Let me just say, that body shot really, as I sit here right now on August 1st, has to be on the very short list of punch of the year candidates. Understand, Bundu needed something big. Understand too, Bundu's not that big a puncher. He needed something big, he got it. Without that punch, we're talking about Randall putting on a definitive performance. We're talking about Gavin putting on a definitive performance. I congratulate Leonard Bundu. Thanks for stopping by.